the Omicron variant still sending shivers to economies around the world, despite the WHO insisting that nations should reevaluate and temper its curves. But what might this mean for an economy that's just beginning to mend like the Philippines? Let's get insights from Chris Nelson, the executive director of the British Chamber of Commerce of the Philippines. Good afternoon, Chris. Good afternoon, Jess. How are you? Doing great. I hope you're doing fine. Well, again, big news of the day, still Omicron variant. It's possible entry again, no longer a question of if, but when, once it comes to that, how's that going to affect the way we do business, especially with members of the chamber? Well, look, I mean, Omicron is obviously very new everywhere. Uh, I mean, if I take the UK's approach, I mean, currently there's only 11 cases. And the UK's uh, advice is obviously not to panic. They've obviously reinforced and brought back masks, which has never gone away in the Philippines. So we've kept that mask operational. They're bringing that back in the UK. They're also bringing back certain things in terms of transportation. So I think the way you've got to look at Omicron at the moment is to be cautious. Uh, obviously, uh, we're getting reports out of South Africa. And I guess the question going forward is to manage it. And I have to say that as the chamber, we've obviously supported very much the current approach, which is the granular lockdowns, which obviously then prevents an overall lockdown. So I think in the case of the Philippines, we're in a good position. It's a question of remaining cautious, but obviously approaching it as they have been doing uh, the IATF with granulated lockdowns, if that occurs. So do you take it to mean as well that, uh, at least for the local economy, it's not going to be much of a, com a concern compared to what we had back when Delta was at its peak here in the country? Yes, I think so. And I think also you've got to look at the way, obviously, I mean, we're now this is, uh, it started March 2020. Uh, so we've obviously seen a lot of developments. Uh, and I think also one has to be fair, both the government and the local government units have obviously refined their policy. Plus, of course, as you said in your earlier report, vaccination rates have gone up significantly, particularly in Metro Manila. And I think the vaccine, uh, certainly in the case of Delta, certainly from its own indication, certainly has an effectiveness. So I think, obviously, there's a drive now. We support that. Uh, AstraZeneca, which is one of our major companies in the British Chamber, was one of the key donators. So I think that combination gives us confidence we can move forward. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the industries expected to be heavily battered, at least, should uh, there be surges due to the Omicron variant, is the travel and tourism industry. How's the variant going to further hamper, or how is it going to hamper the recovery of the sector? Well, obviously, I mean, if you look at what the Philippines has been doing, and we've been a supporter of that, is to try and encourage more travel. I mean, travel is not obviously just on tourism. It's also business people and investments, uh, and clearly that's one of our key aims. And obviously the government approved the policy on the green and the yellow list, which I think was for the yellow is three days. Now they've combined it back to three days. They were looking at international tourism. Uh, I still think there's opportunities there. Uh, clearly, local tourism is obviously continuing to grow, and we're supporting the sector. So I think the question of, of doing this, Jess, is this: is it going to be the uh, a very cautious, but uh, the approach they're taking is has been very well validated. I think the quarantine plan they got in place, which is the three days for the yellow and green, and obviously, hopefully, that can go back to the green list, which is obviously for fully vaccinated people. And I think if you look at the hospitality sector and, of course, in that in the restaurant sector, we're seeing some now recovery. And the way forward, as I said, is to what the government's doing is to go away from having the overall lockdowns, but being very specific and therefore to keep the economy moving forward. OK, now, of course, authorities have been saying, well, there's no clear uh, data yet as to how the Omicron variant is going to affect the efficacy of vaccines. We should just keep on inoculating the population. And uh, on that note, you have the UK completing uh, the donation of at least 5.2 million AstraZeneca doses to the country. Would Should we be expecting more donations? Look, I think the UK and many, so I think also uh, that's through the uh, WH program as well. I think the UK and I think or other countries involved. And I think it's a recognition across the world, actually, that uh, there's a need to vaccinate, dare I say, everyone. Um, I mean, I think it's been put very well that we're all safe when everybody is safe, right? So I think there is that. I mean, this is the 75th year of diplomatic relations between the UK and the Philippines. 
Uh, we have a new ambassador in place, uh, Ambassador Law Bofis, and, and the relationship is very strong, and I think that started before. And uh, I think, yes, I mean, obviously the Philippines is very supportive, not just obviously on the vaccines, but also in terms of economic cooperation and support in general. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of the economic agenda of the, uh, the national government, you have the chamber really pushing hard for certain economic measures, such as the Retail Trade Liberalization Act. Uh, we are expecting, of course, Congress to go on a holiday break. How confident are you that these priority bills, bills rather, will be passed before Duterte ends his term? Well, in the first case, if you take the Retail Trade Liberalization Act, that's already been passed through the bicameral. It's been signed as an in-roll bill. It's with the Office of the President since the 10th of December. Uh, sorry, 10th of November, let me correct that. Apologies. Uh, however, there, and therefore, we're anticipating that will be signed or go into law very shortly. So the Retail Trade Liberalization Act, that'll be a very key measure in that sector. We believe there were discussions today in the Foreign Investment Act and the bicameral, so we have confidence there. And we'd also like to see the Public Service Act. Now, mm -hmm. if we get all those, and I think this is a very important point, Jess, because it will be a clear signal to investors and obviously lead to, my, to even further foreign direct investment. Mm -hmm. So am I confident? Yes, I'm confident on the Retail Trade Act. I'm confident for the Foreign Investment Act. Obviously, the Public Service Act, in terms of its timing, is behind, but we're still hopeful. And I think the key for the Philippines is that if we get all those acts passed, we can further reinforce it to UK companies who've already expressed an interest, and that will certainly assist the economic recovery of the country, which obviously was featured in the earlier part of the program. Okay, but pending those measures, what's the level of interest now among UK companies to invest in the Philippines? How many firms are looking to set up shop in the country in 2022? Well, what I can say is this, actually. So during 2020 and 21, which obviously we've all been living in this uh, pandemic, we've had, still had significant interest, particularly in our key sectors of retail, food and drink, beverage, advanced machinery, business outsourcing. So I think there's great opportunities. I, I would certainly say those companies are looking forward to seeing these signals of these acts passing. And I think the other thing I want to stress here is that we have been a great advocate and are an advocate to UK companies to see the Philippines not only as in itself a great market, but as an entry to all of Southeast Asia. So interest is high. Uh, and I think I'd just like to, again, urge, obviously, the people in Congress, the Senate, get those bills passed as well, and because I think it will send a great signal. It was one of the points we reinforced last Friday at the Department of Finance and BSV Forum. So interest is high. It'll be further supported with those measures. But can we at least get a number? Like, do you have at least uh, certain firms now already at least concluding or trying to complete requirements and the possibility of investing here in the Philippines next oh, year? Oh, I think so. I mean, we got, we've had, a, I mean, look, over time, we've done a lot of uh, inquiries. And I think this year alone, we've been handling probably in the region of something inquiries to whether that lead to business is something else mm -hmm. but i would say we've had at least over 30 plus uh and i think the way forward is not only of course been investing finding partners here we've done work on that respect and of course we do a lot of work in terms of uh, promoting and educating and working with it so i'd say jess interest is high opportunities are there and, and really, I think the key for the Philippines is to, to go forward in this pandemic. As I said, I can't reiterate it enough that these measures will be important in that. And I think it will be very helpful, be not just helpful, but critical in the, in the economic recovery. All right. Speaking of economic recovery, you just have to ask you this. When do you see at least the Philippines returning to uh, its pre-pandemic level of growth? Well, there's been variations on that. I think we're looking probably, I've seen different indications, but probably towards the, the latter half of uh, 2022, um, coming in 23. I think what's important, of course, in that is, is there's certain dynamics the Philippines can't control, obviously world events, uh, supplies and so forth. But I think linked to that is obviously the Bill Bill program. Uh, I would commend that the way we've moved forward now in terms of of the managing uh, the risk going to granulated lockdowns. I mean, I, again, I would just commend the work we've done also and supported Joey Conception, who has now been given the Lifetime Arancada Award. 
Uh, I think also keeping in the way the, the Banco Central has operated and supported, and of course, the Department of Finance through its actions. So I think there's good opportunities towards obviously this uh, the uh, the latter part of 2022 and getting back to the recovery and the growth rate that we will enjoy, which is obviously six and a half plus. All right, the second half of 2022, uh, of course, we're all hoping for the same or even earlier, if possible. Thank you very much for your time this afternoon. Chris Nelson, Executive Director of the British Chamber of Commerce of the Philippines. Thank you, Chris. Stay safe. Great pleasure, Jess, and uh, thank you to all your viewers as well. Have a good day.